It's a crazy place we live in. This here city made of lights. It's not easy staying grounded or to have a normal life. It's just like an island in the desert, and there ain't nothing for miles around. So it takes a little bit of effort just getting out of this old town. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another Sunday morning vlog. We are not in Nevada. We are on the road. We headed due north up Interstate 15. We just landed in Utah. Yeah, we're right outside. Actually, we're right in cl very close to St. George right now. Which is uh, one of their bigger cities on the edge of Utah. And we are taking a little road adventure today. Uh, can't wait to take you along with us. Yes, we are heading for a lovely little town called Cedar City. You are going to love it. It's another one of those mountain towns above 6,000 feet in elevation. And then we're going to head up to the Cedar Breaks National Monument. Ooh, baby, what a day. All right, this adventure starts right now. If you saw our road trip to Pioche video a couple weeks back, this turnoff will look very familiar. That's US 93 up into northeastern Nevada. About 50 miles north of town, we enter the Mawapa River Indian Reservation, home of the Mawapa Band of Paiutes. Off to our right is their 10,000 square foot travel plaza with the largest selection of fireworks in the area. In years past, there was a Native American from Montana who drive down every winter, park here, and sell the best buffalo jerky off the back of his truck. You may notice this is also the turnoff for Valley of Fire State Park. We made a video showing this park a few months ago and we'll link to it in the description box below. A little further north are the unincorporated towns of Glendale and Mawapa Valley, with a population of about 7,000. Wapa Valley is actually a merging of two adjacent towns, Logandale and Overton. There's ranching and farming here, and it's the site of the Clark County Fair and Rodeo in the spring. That road runs to the east of Valley of Fire and all the way to Lake Mead. All right, just about 90 minutes north of Las Vegas is this oasis, Mesquite. Originally known for its jewel green golf courses, it's now a thriving and growing community of resorts, homes, and businesses. The 2010 census put the population at 15,000, but we are guessing this next one will actually double that because the growth here is incredible. We just love escaping to Mesquite and especially staying at the Casablanca. There are several casino resorts in Mesquite who boast an old Vegas feeling, more intimate and certainly less expensive. And it's turning out to be a great place to retire as well. Where are you headed, Mr. Dale? Uh, Where are you headed? Cedar City. Oh yeah? 6,000 feet? And some kind of mountain place, I don't know. <laughs> I love when you know the itinerary. I don't know. I don't know the names of places. Just drive. I just drive. And here we are, crossing into Arizona for just a short bit and approaching one of the most breathtaking stretches of road you will ever see, the Virgin River Gorge. We cross through Arizona and that old Virgin River Gorge. You know, there ain't nothing like that stretch of road that I've ever seen before. Then just a few miles down the highway are the rust and purple hues of the peaks of southern Utah and those never-ending views. This is a long canyon, originally carved out by the Virgin River, which you can see off to our right every now and then. 
Although it's not much to look at now, this mighty river created the landscape that you're looking at, as well as the topography of Zion National Park, the power of water. This stretch of Interstate 15 is one of the most expensive parts of the interstate highway system ever constructed. And no wonder, because of all the twists and turns, it requires all your concentration to be in the driver's seat. Just past the Virgin River Gorge, we begin to see glimpses of sandstone rock that is characteristic of southern Utah. And sure enough, here we are. Welcome to Utah and closer to our destination. And the speed limit on the open road is 80 miles an hour. Let's get going. The first town you come to in southern Utah is beautiful St. George. This sprawling metro area has a population of about 172,000, making it the seventh largest city in the state. It's about a two-hour drive from Las Vegas, but I'll tell you what, it's worlds away. In the mid-1800s, the town of St. George was founded as a cotton mission by the Mormons. Well, the cotton didn't take off, but tourism sure did, with Zion being very close by. The St. George Temple of the LDS Church was completed in 1877. You can just see the spire over here to our left. This is the oldest continually operating Latter-day Saints Temple in the world. Within a few minutes, we are through St. George and chasing the red iron oxide rocks further north into Utah. Just to our right is Kolob Canyon, a section of Zion National Park that features an excellent hike with spectacular views at the top. We highly recommend this, it's well worth your time. We are starting to climb an elevation here, and of course we're seeing the vegetation on the mountainsides change as well. The evergreens are plentiful here, and they smell terrific. Good thing we don't need the AC today because the truck has to work really hard getting up these grades. Once you get nearer to Cedar City, the land opens up on both left and right, and you're treated to some of the prettiest ranch land you're ever going to see. We just love this stretch of road right here, and we're so glad we finally got to capture a bit of it on video. About 170 miles or so from the Las Vegas Strip, a two and a half hour drive is the mountain town of Cedar City, Utah, and we can't wait to show it to you. This town too has been experiencing tremendous growth in recent years, and today the population is estimated at about 35,000. Cedar City sits at 5,846 feet in elevation and was named for the juniper trees that grow wild in this area, which the settlers mistook for cedar. It was settled in 1851 by Mormon pioneers who had been sent to build an ironworks. The iron furnaces didn't last long, but the iron mining did well into the 1980s. But what really defined Cedar City for the past century has been tourism. It's the gateway to the Utah National Parks. It's known as Festival City USA for its abundance of entertainment and themed events, many of which we have attended. But more than that in a few minutes. Plus, who expects to see a red and white striped lighthouse in the mountains of Utah? <laughs> it's just that kind of town. Main Street is utterly charming. You know, it actually looks like a movie set. Mm -hmm. 
We didn't take our cameras inside any of these shops and stores, but trust us, they're just as appealing inside. And yes, the Bullock drug does have a soda fountain inside. Barbershops, craft shops, businesses, the Sheep Association, hanging flower baskets, commemorative statues, and a fabulous mountain backdrop. What's not to love about this on a September afternoon? This spot on the corner is Boomer's Bloomers, one of our favorite shops on Main Street. They feature fresh flowers, homemade candies, gifts, and upstairs, there's a restaurant as well. Time for a break and something to eat. We chose the Great Harvest Bread Company right on Main Street for a fresh made sandwich and a cold drink. All right, guys, we stopped for a little bit of lunch. We're both on gonna, Main Street? On Main Street. We're both going to have an egg sandwich. At and the Great Harvest Bread Company. Then we're going to go check out the college, which is where they do all the... Uh, Shakespeare, shows. Shakespeare yeah. Festival, which is one of our favorite things about Cedar City. All right, we'll see you over there. So, earlier we mentioned the festivals and events in Cedar City. Over here on the campus of the excellent Southern Utah University with a student population of 10,000 is the Utah Shakespeare Festival. I can't tell you how many Las Vegas residents come here every summer and fall for their Tony Award winning plays and musicals. The season runs from June through October each year and features several plays by Shakespeare along with musicals, comedies, and dramas from the most notable playwrights. This venue is the Adam Shakespearean Theater which housed the Bard's plays until it was retired in 2015. It's reminiscent of the Globe Theater in London. In 2016, the festival enjoyed a huge upgrade, and now the plays are performed in the new Engelstad Shakespeare Theater across the street. Still open air, but state-of-the-art and a larger seating capacity as well. During the autumn is the Cedar City Livestock and Heritage Festival with its main attraction, the Sheep Parade. Yep, it's exactly what it sounds like. There is a lot of ranching in the area, particularly sheep, and a whole lot of those guys get to march up Main Street on a Saturday in October to the delight of the crowds. But that's not all. There's something going on in Festival City, USA almost every single weekend. And every summer there is a PRCA-sanctioned rodeo in Cedar City in the excellent Cross Hollow Event Center and Arena. We attended the rodeo a few years back, and it is a really good time. It's an old-fashioned outdoor arena, and as the sun is setting, it's picture perfect. We keep talking about Cedar City being the gateway to the national park, so why don't we just go to one and take you along with us? We catch Highway 14 right in the center of Cedar City, and there's only one way to go, and that's up. 20 miles up to be exact. We are headed to Cedar Breaks, but up this road are also two getaway spots for thousands of Las Vegans looking to escape the summer heat. Navajo Lake and Duck Creek. We will put those on our to-do list for a future video. Meanwhile, we are climbing Cedar Mountain at a pretty intense grade, and as always, we are enthralled by the changes in scenery and vegetation around every corner. A few minutes, a few miles, and all of a sudden there is this off to our right. You can see for hundreds of miles. This is right near the summit and a little green placard that reads 9,910 feet. You know you are up way in the clouds when you start to see these sub-alpine meadows. And you start to wonder how could they actually be up here, don't you? And then, we are there. 
There's a tiny little traffic jam at the entrance to the park, so we obviously know this is the place to be today. The visitor center is closed right now, but the parking lot is really, really busy. So go down the road a bit and you'll find the money shot just like we did. Cedar Breaks National Monument. How stunning is this? It's a natural amphitheater with the top seats above 10,000 feet and the ringside seats are way down there 2,000 feet below us. It's more than three miles wide, formed over millions of years of uplift and erosion. Up here at the top of the plateau, there is a lot of volcanic rock and in the layers further down, shale, limestone, and of course, sandstone. Canyons like this and Bryce are known as Badlands, a landscape of canyons, spires, walls, and cliffs that are very beautiful, but not very useful. The settlers in the early days called them breaks, which is where the name came from. The native peoples, though, called it the Circle of Painted Cliffs. And if you are a stargazer, Cedar Breaks is a dark sky park, perfect for astral viewing. Okay, what'd you think about this, Paula? This was an exciting day trip, was it not? This is a breathless day trip, but I think it's because I'm at 10,000 feet in elevation. I think we're higher than 10,000 <laughs> feet right actually, now. Actually, that was a yeah. ways ago, yeah. yeah. So we had an exciting day. We started out in Las Vegas. We went to Cedar City. What a terrific little town, isn't it? I would I would live in Cedar City in a minute. And then this death-defying trip up here to Cedar Breaks. Oh my gosh. We were gasping all the way, or at least when we started to get near the top. We're up at the tundra, you guys. This is amazing. It is amazing. <laughs> all right, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification button and follow us on our social media. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being along on these exciting and thrilling adventures. If it wasn't for you, we might not even be doing them. <laughs> all right, hope you had a good time. We'll see you next time. Bye, bye, everyone. bye everybody. Okay, guys, we're home. Well, not quite home. We're back in Las Vegas. We're back in Las Vegas. That was quite a long drive and quite a long day, wasn't it? It was go, go, go. We left very early this morning, and we got back just in time for the Golden Knights uh, game to kick off, and we ordered ourselves a burger at one of our favorite taverns. Yeah, we did this whole thing in a day. We should have actually spent the night, but I have to be home tomorrow because I have to edit all this kitchen. Go, go, go. There's a lot for Mr. Dale to be working on all, all right. the time. We'll show you our burgers once they get here. Yep. Thank you, my dear. Wow, that looks great. Thank you, Sam. I don't, I don't eat a, a burger with a bun. I know I'm odd, but is that the most beautiful looking burger you ever saw? And I asked for a side salad. What the heck? It's, it's unreal. I can't believe this. I'm going to film Paula now and show you what she got. So, I'm a bread kind of gal. I got the bun because, you know, it's just how I roll. And I got a basket of fries that I hope Dale will share with me. So, we're oh, going to dig in. Fries There's, have arrived. Oh All right. Thank, Thank you, Sam. Yeah. Perfect timing. Look at this. It's a little cast iron skillet. So cute. Hey guys, check out our Teespring store. We now have hoodies and we're on Patreon.